<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Today is November 5th, and I might be doing something crazy today. As you all know, we live in Urayasu city and what is Urayasu area most well known for? Disney, Disneyland and Disney Sea. Well, Casey and I randomly just decided, oh, let's go to their website. And all of a sudden, the next thing I know is we are filling out an application and we're sending it in. Then the very next day, what happens? I get an email saying that they want to see me the next day. I thought that was a little fast, but what do I know? So I'm in my gear for this interview because they said that you don't have to dress up, just wear your clothes, which is really nice actually. And I just have to bring my Zyru card, my foreigner card, and I'm more nervous about my Japanese than anything because I'm worried I won't be able to understand a question because I'm gonna become like extremely nervous and extremely aware that my Japanese sucks. But we'll see what happens. And I'm pretty much going in thinking that I'm gonna fail anyway, so I don't know. Just just getting the interview is a win for me. Let's just keep thinking that way. It is crazy this morning. Another thing is I have no idea what kind of questions they're gonna ask me. Like I know they're gonna be like, why Disney? Why here? Kind of a thing. Where in Disney do you wanna work? But I just I just don't know what's gonna happen. Any, anything's possible at this point. I'm nervous, I'm excited. I don't know. Also, I cannot take video or pictures in the area that I have to go to for this interview. So unfortunately, you guys can't share that experience with me, but I'll let you know. <laughs> but I will let you know how it goes afterwards because I want coffee and Starbucks is closed and Tana Papa gave me a free drink gift coupon thingy and I'm gonna use it today since I didn't get to use it on Friday like I wanted to. <laughs> I'm slowly getting closer and closer to where I need to be. This is Xperia, like the backside, and behind me is Disneyland and I'm like headed towards Disney Sea. I'm getting so nervous, like this is crazy. Finished. I, I I finished it. I I did it. I'm so distracted by Christmas. Whoa. I did the thing, and then I did a little shopping thing, and then I bought some Starbucks, and now I'm in the comfy thing again. So the thing, as I said earlier, I went to an interview for Disney casting, but not like Princess because we all know this girl's too curvy to be a zero size Disney princess. Okay, okay, okay. They might not be zero sized, but we all know that they have size restrictions for the characters, for height, weight, dress size, because they have to fit into character. And we all know that Disney doesn't have any curvy plus size, you know, princesses maybe i could be ursula because ursula is pretty plump but like um i don't even think i'd be tall enough for ursula because i think she'd be pretty tall the point of the story is the point of the story is i tried something i never thought i was gonna do in japan i went to a job interview that was in japanese only and i did the best that i could when i first got there i had to check in at the gate and I, I did that pretty okay, but you know, I fumbled around like a silly gaijin because I'm just a silly, nervous gaijin. Sorry, foreigner. And then when I got inside, they gave me a form and I had to check what we had already filled out online and then add some more information. And that form was only in Japanese, which this girl can't read kanji. So I used my phone to start translating and there's no pictures or video like I said. So the lady's like, um, you can't take any pictures. And I was like, oh no, I'm using a translator. And she's like, oh, okay, but no pictures. It doesn't save the pictures, right? And I was like, 
Yeah, no, it just pauses the screen and translates it into English and then it's gone. It doesn't save to my phone. She's like, okay, that's fine. And so I continue filling out my form and then I finally get into the, the room with the lady to do the interview. And what does she do? Like the super Japanese thing that I feel like always happens. We just go through the form together. Everything I've filled out, everything that's on the form, we just go through the form again together. I don't know how to explain it. Like in the States, I feel like, yeah, there's some questions that are on a piece of paper that your job interviewer always has and they always try to ask you. But in Japan, I feel like there's no veering from the main like thing. Like if you have a, a piece of paper with questions on it, you're only gonna ask those questions on that paper. You're not gonna veer off and be like, oh, like like a follow-up question follow-up questions I think like I've never had in Japan mostly she she gets to the end and she's like is there anything you want to ask me and I was like oh my god like I need a question <laughs> because in the states they always say you should ask a question at the end of your interview just just make it seem like you're interested or something I actually don't remember what the reason is but you know something like that but you know so I asked, I asked about like hair color because there was something in the hair, there was something in the casting booklet um, about hair color and I know that most Japanese people only have black hair and they were like showing forms of brown and like none of my brown is listed and I was like, is my hair color okay? It's natural, I don't dye it. Oh yeah, your hair color's fine. You know, uh, Japanese people, they always like dye their hair lighter colors and like that's, that's okay, but there's like certain colors that are only okay and I was just like, so my hair color fine, right? I don't know. I don't, we'll see what happens. She's like, your Japanese is really good. I was like, oh, thank you. And she's like, I, I was really surprised by how well you filled out the form. And I was like, well, I use a translator because I can't read that fast is what I said, which we all know, I just can't read kanji. And it's just like, Mwah. I was honest. And I was just like, you know, I, I can't read well. Still kind of like hinting at like, huh, maybe she can't read at all. But you know, we're kind of, I, I'm, I'm really not sure how well your level is. And I'm just like, yeah, I, you know, I can't read well, but I, I'll try my best. Any Anytime I try something, I try my best. And so we'll see what happens. But she pretty much said that if we want you, we'll send you an email. If we don't want you, won't get anything. So now I'm sitting here going, well, how do I know? How do I know how long to wait? I think she said within a month. So within this month, I should know. Well, not know or kind of know if I'm gonna be requested back well not requested back get a job because there's no second interview there's no nothing what did they really learn from this interview besides uh that i can work uh, any day all day because that's what i wrote <laughs> i don't know like how do you learn about the people that you're hiring if you don't ask like certain questions like there is one question it's like why do you want to work at disney but they didn't ask me like where would you want to work what you you said all for like any position but like which position would you like best why would you like that position you know those follow-up questions those things that you ask people to try to figure out more information to see if this person's really gonna work for you and work for you well i don't know but it was fun i enjoyed it i was really really nervous but I did it, I managed to do an interview all in Japanese, which I never thought was gonna be possible, especially since like the first things that I could pretty much say when I got here was, hello, my name is Amanda, nice to meet you. Uh, hello, good morning, and uh, how much does this cost? And uh, where's the toilet? Very important things to know. But now I'm, you know, communicating with people and trying to find jobs that are going to be better suited for my lifestyle, that are going to help me be happier. You know, I, I am an English teacher and I do love the job because I do like working with the kids, but it's a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that's the hard stuff. Not just being a teacher in general, but like working in the industry that's being an English teacher here in Japan. Most jobs treat you like you can just be replaced super easy and any kind of like good quality you might have for that company isn't worth enough to try to fight hard to keep you to make sure that you're happy with what you're doing. Don't get me wrong, I was here on Jet originally and my situation with Jet was great. I had great schools, I worked with great teachers, other ALTs in my area were super nice, super fun people, great partiers by the way, but that is a limited thing. If you're a high school teacher as an ALT with Jet, you can work for three years at, at your current school if they recontract you. 
Then if you're a junior high school teacher right off the bat, you have five years that you can renew if they want you. But if you're lucky enough and a high school teacher, you can switch for trying to get two more extra years by working at a junior high school. If you can find a placement, they always have a tough time finding a switch for you, which doesn't make any sense because we always get in like a ton of new teachers every year and you can try to switch to a different pre Pre blah, 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 blah. You can try to switch to a different prefecture, but it doesn't always work, which is unfortunate because JET is really great. Some things suck, some things suck in any job that you get. But from my experience from being outside the program, being an English teacher is hard. It's a lot of hard hours. It's a lot of feeling like you're not in control of your life here in Japan and it, it's tough. But if you're willing to try and you're willing to work hard, it's it's a great opportunity to come work in Japan. Um, but I don't know if it's a forever lifestyle because after a while you just run out of energy. You just run out of the want to be there for what feels like 24 hours all day, every day. And then you're two days off on a weekend. You just pretty much are a couch potato because you're exhausted for how much energy you're trying to be the Genki English teacher and you have to teach all these kids. It's tough, but the kids are great and it's a great learning experience. So if you can do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. I'm trying to find my spot yet in the whole, the whole, English teacher world or even trying to find something different like me doing a job interview at Disney Don't forget to subscribe uh, Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know other videos that you'd like to do and um, Let's keep enjoying life. See ya